They don't reach sexual maturity until they're two for the uh, males and three for the females. I don't know how much you already know about hyenas, so I don't want to. This is Harley right here in front of us. She's the oldest and she's a female. So she's actually of reproductive age and uh, she, you can see her clitoris there, but it's not really erect. Uh, but she hasn't conceived yet. We don't know if she's mated yet. And often that's the case. She's living with two males and they've been together since they were, since she was six months old. So, so Ozzy directs a lot of threats towards Tusker and try and tries to get Harley to join in. But she's pretty mellow. She's pretty good. Yeah. But they're unmistakable when you see them out from a distance because of the way they walk. With their shorter hind legs. I would say she's around 52 kilos, which is, you know, 120 pounds, maybe, 120. But Tusker is pretty small. I would bet he's more like mm, 45 kilos. So he would just be around 100, low end. And this is kind of small. We have some larger animals here. And it does seem like although it could just be my selective memory, but they're, they've gotten smaller over the years. And you can see some of them have uh, these really pretty black feet and others, they're, they're much lighter. And their spots are all different. Oh yeah, they're so, let's have that. I was introduced to 10 hyenas at one time. They were, let's see, maybe they were about six months old at that point and people had been regularly going in with them. And Steve wanted to make sure there were a mixture of people going in, you know, so they wouldn't be afraid of like males if they just saw all females. Uh -huh. or, Tusker. We might greet him now. Let's see. Oh, he's. It's okay. And is that a way of appeasing as well? Or uh, is that just kind of fear? It's fear. So when you hear laughing hyenas, I mean, it's usually some. It, they're either super excited, like at a kill or someone, you know, something like this is happening. Someone's afraid and running around. You have a leaf in your mouth, you look pretty silly. But if you're too afraid and run away, you'll just draw more attention to yourself and your breeding success will really plummet. You have to have a, you have to be uh, confident to be a successful hyena male. And that's, that can be hard. Ozzy, you look so nice, but look what you did. So when it, oh, Combo, Combo, come here, come here. <laughs> combo, come here. So, 
Winnie is hiding from her because he's the male, he's subordinate to her, and so uh, I actually gave him the smaller bone, but she finished hers first. That's why we have an extra bone so that she won't go after him. Well, she went after him, but she will leave him alone enough to eat his bone. They can eat up to a third of their body weight at one time. They would eat. I don't know when they would ever stop if we really put a lot of food in with them. Their tongues are rough like cats. They have those barbs, those spines on them. But they really are dog-like. So a hundred and like a hundred pound hyena could go to 130, 140 pounds just from gorging itself. Oh yeah. The nature of the hyena with the females with this enlarged clitoris, you know, the presumption was that it was androgens that caused that. And, and so that, and, and through various little tweaks that we've done, it's, genitals are, the formation is androgen dependent, but the growth and development are androgen independent. So that's pretty strange. That's one of the main focuses of our research now. You know, there are other mammals that, well, you know, even fish, they, there's weird things about sex in a lot of different ma animals, but with hyenas... Aren't there some fish that actually change yeah, sexes? they change sexes depending, and frogs that, you know, now that are they're environmental disruptors that are causing oh, that. more females than males and stuff like that. Oh, you know, I wish I wish I brought a couple hot dogs for you, but, <laughs> but you probably want something a little more substantial, I think. If there are two animals here, they'll eat anything. You know, you could throw in a mushroom and they'll fight over it. If it was just one animal and you gave it a mushroom, it probably wouldn't eat it. But <laughs> this is the time of day they're usually just sleeping. Especially a so nice do warm they eat, day. Do they eat once a day? Yeah, this, they eat in the morning. So from about uh, 8 to 10, the colony is being fed. And they're very active then, and they start getting active. People get here at seven, so around six o'clock in the morning, they really start picking up and stretching, and then Hello. they start looking for people. And they definitely recognize people. They have good memories, which makes sense because of the way they live. They can live with about a hundred different animals, so they have to know who's who, and what their rank is relative to them. Oh, Ursa. Ursa's not always so friendly. You know, once dominance is established, the it's everything becomes more ritualized. And so, like, you might feel that someone needs a reminder every now and then, like Ozzy did with Tusker, and it's kind of a punitive thing. But we have had some some fights. When we had 10 animals living together, when they reached sexual maturity, there was a lot of aggression. And that's why now we have such small groups. Now, is that this Aussie or this is the girl? This is the female? No, Harley is the female and ha she's laying right here. Oh, so that's Harley. So this is Aussie and... Yeah, yeah okay. Tusker's in the periphery. I remember... You know, at the time when we were, we had the second group here that had been wild caught and hand reared and the, the vet came up to give them a vaccination. And so, well, they were three months old, so they were really manageable. And so, I would, she just would walk, walk in with all of them and I would pick one up one by one and she would vaccinate them. And she had a skirt on with nylons and they, course had never seen nylons before and they all kept coming up and licking her leg because of the <laughs> texture of the nylon 
is really funny. Camp, who is at Michigan State University and has the field component of this study, basically. Animals that have been in the Maasai Mara and studied there since the late 70s. Um, and so she invited me out to camp a couple of times, so I got to you know, be in her camp and, and, and see how things are done out there and, and uh, what it's like for a hyena in the wild as opposed to a hyena here. See that black kind of dot? See where their mouth goes? There's fur and then there's that black. So when you look at them front on, it looks like they're smiling. It just... Uh, oh, sort of like, yeah, it's yeah, painted. Yeah. yeah. They're really wonderful animals. So that combined with the strange laugh, 